Hello, my beautiful people. Oh, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm very excited to do because I'm doing a roundup of a project pan that I had going on during 2023. I've started my project pan back in April, 2023, and I've done a few updates throughout the year. I will have the entire playlist link for you in the description box for your reference if you wanted to look into intro and updates. So in today's video, I am not going to be going through reviews of the products or sharing my thoughts on the products. It's primarily going to be a roundup of a project generally. So today is going to be a finale and general overview of where I started and where I ended up. So what products I still have here, and what's the verdict? What am I doing with these products? Are they being decluttered? Are they being still used and moving on with me to 2024? So all of that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And also at the end of the video, I will share some of my final thoughts on the project, how it went for me, because I have done project, unofficial project pants on my own time without filming it. And in 2023, I made it official. I turned it into a mini series. I am going to do all my final roundup thoughts and what's in it for project pan in 2024. Is it going to be continuing? Do we have different plans? Stay tuned. I will share all that with you at the end of the video. But if you're new here, hello, my name is Eve. I love all things beauty here on my channel. Primarily talk about beauty and lifestyle. I upload new videos every week. I hope you enjoy this video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my future videos. But now without further ado, let's dive in. So as you guys remember, Here's the basket with my current product. So, and I also have the bin here with all my empties that I try to save and accumulate throughout the year. I also have my clipboard right here with all the product details and everything. So just to recap here a little bit, I started the project in 2023 in April and uh, I initially wanted to do like quarterly follow-ups, but I ended up having a follow-up in August and in October. So October video was the last one that went out and here we are with the finale with all the final numbers. So I call this project a project pan. However, However, my initial goal was to actually get the most use out of all these products that ended up here in this bin and uh, potentially even finish them. So it was like a project pan slash project use up type of deal. And to keep up with the process and progress of all these products, I simply counted the usage of each individual product. So right now I'm just going to go through all the categories of the products that were here. I didn't have every single category. They primarily were complexion products. And I'm going to just tell you what I started with and what I currently have and what happens to all these products now, now that we're going into 2024. So let's start with the setting spray category. I had three overall throughout this entire year. So I started with these two products initially, and then the Too Faced Hangover Spray was rolled in mid-year. As a matter of fact, I finished these two products and this is currently in use. However, I had to repackage it and put it in this container because this container was faulty. So I currently have still about a half of a bottle and this product is being rolled out to 2024 I do want to finish it because it's really good quality as a matter of fact all these three setting sprays are very very good quality so it was considerably easy for me to go through setting sprays as a product as a category in this project pan project use up because I'm a combination oily skin I live in hot and humid Florida so setting spray is one of those makeup products that is pretty much essential for me so I did not have any issues going through setting sprays or using them up it was definitely not a force usage in the primers category I had three primers and they were all minis and I used them all up definitely took me a little bit of time to use up these products because they were a little bit more on the hydrating side but um, I finished them all up and um, that's a progress. I started with these three products and I finished them all. I did not introduce any additional uh, primers in that category throughout the year. So I was just happy to see those being completely done. So in the concealer category, I started with four concealers in April and I currently have two in my hands. This one is empty from ColourPop and this one from Bare Minerals I am still working on. This is a hydrating formula, so it takes me a little bit longer to use. There's still a considerably good amount of product left in this concealer and I'm gonna be uh, keeping this into 2024. This is called Bare Minerals. Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer. This is a really good quality concealer and it works very well for me, but it is more of the hydrating formula. So it takes me a little bit more time to use it on my combo oily skin. As of right now, I'm keeping this product and I am rolling it over to 2024. This concealer from ColourPop is an empty and the other two concealers I ended up decluttering. In fact, as a side note, I do have a series going on here on my channel. They're called Stash or Trash, which is the series or episodes where I talk about my beauty empties, products that I finished. Those are one of my favorite videos to film here for 
for my channel and I will have the playlist link for you in the description box. So the two other concealers that were here in the Project Pans were technically decluttered because one of them, the brush broke and then the second one started changing texture. So I ended up decluttering it midway. So out of four that I started with, I am currently am left with one and one empty and two decluttered products. So in the powder category, I had four products that I started with uh, back in April and I have all of them here in my hands. Two of these products were empties. Uh, this Tarte Shape Tape powder, loose powder was excellent and I finished it, I think, the fastest. But then I had Patrick Todd Duo here with a foundation and a powder. I didn't care for the foundation so much. For me personally, did not work out. So I was just focusing on a powder and the powder was a pretty good quality. So I used it up. And then I have uh, two powders that are still here. This is a Physician's Formula powder. And as you can see, I have a little bit of a progress, but it is harder for me to use because it's a broken packaging, obviously. And then the second powder that I still have here is from Bare Minerals. And I still have a lot of product left here. I do have like a really nice dent going on in here but this is a really good powder and it's considerably firmly pressed so what is the verdict for these two so if you watch any of my declutter videos oh i did mention that going into 2024 i do not want to deal with broken packaging if uh, packaging is poor i simply just going to get rid of it i do love physicians formula complexion products generally at the same time it's very difficult for me to use a product that looks like this even though it's here sitting in front of me and i a lot of times i just get ready here in this room but I can't travel with this product. I can't take it to work. I can't take it in my bag. So it's actually limiting me in options of um, the ways how I can use this. So this will be decluttered today. So I also had a loose powder from Milani Cosmetics and unfortunately I disposed of the packaging. I think I accidentally throw it away, but that powder was fully finished. Because I'm a combination oily skin, I use powders all the time and powders go really fast in my possession. So I never have an issue using up a powder, especially when it comes to loose powders. Loose powders for me go so much faster than the pressed powder. I can use a container of loose powder in a month. Uh, and as far as this Bare Minerals Bare Skin Powder, I am keeping it because it is a good quality powder and it's a really nice sturdy compact and um, I wanna continue using it. In the foundations category, I started with five products and I have them here in my hand. Two of these products are empty. So my Bare Minerals foundation is empty and then my CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream is also empty. And then as far as these three products, this Skin Feels Good foundation from Lancome is absolutely beautiful quality. It looks gorgeous on skin. So there's a little bit of product left here and I'm gonna continue using it. I intend to finish this product. The same goes for a pretty natural foundation from Essence. I have maybe like this much left on the bottom and I do wanna finish it. This is beautiful hydrating formula works for me in winter right now. I've been reaching for this foundation quite a bit. The one that I'm going to be letting go of is this one from Clinique. This foundation I've had for some time and every time I take out the wand, there's something on the very tip of the um, applicator. I think it's just okay if I let this go because I know there's a little bit of product left there, but it's fine. I'm at peace with that. Then I had a miscellaneous category, if you will, of the products that I didn't really had intentions to finish, but I just had an intention to reach for them because these two products didn't have uh, much sense in my collection. However, I already spent my money on them and I wanted to give them as much love as I could possibly. And uh, one of these products is still here. This is of Halo Glow. The second product was a Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer, which I already happened to declutter out of my collection at the end of the year when I was doing my complexion product declutters. I will have the declutter playlist linked for you in the description box as well if you wanted to catch up on some of the videos. This product is not a bad quality, but it just simply does not fit into my beauty routine. This product is almost pointless for me, for my routine, for my skin type, the way I do my makeup. There was just so much hype about this product and I think I just simply bought into the hype while deep in my heart and my soul, I knew that this product was not for me. I guess I just wanted to satisfy my curiosity and just see for myself why people are so crazy about it. But you know what, from the beginning, like I thought, is just not the product for me. I knew it from the start, but I was like, okay, I, let me test it. So in the next category, I'll talk about these two products together because they're by the same brand and they have the same formulations. Technically, they, both of these are cream products. This one is a Super Shock Cheek Blush in a cream formulation. This is definitely a good progress for me for this formula. This formula is drier and it's putty-like. So it's considerably difficult to use it up because it just takes a long time for it to go. It doesn't have softness to it. It would last you forever. And because I've had this product for several years, it stiffened a little bit more. It definitely took a lot of effort uh, from me to get to the pan of this size. I definitely could finish it out, but I feel like it's just take too much energy out of me because I believe that 
application of makeup should be therapeutic. It should be enjoyable. I don't feel like I need to be forcing myself to use something that I naturally do not reach for. Originally, it was a beautiful formula and I really love the shade. This type of shade I use a lot in our fall and winter seasons when it gets a little bit cooler. I love those like mauve pinky tones. However, because the formula is so stiff, I just feel like it takes too much effort for me to use it. So at the moment, I'm going to let it go. I feel good about the effort that I've put in into using this product throughout the year. So I feel good about letting it go. And then the next cream product um, in this category is also from ColourPop. This is their Cream Super Shock Shadow. And this had a cream formula with a satin finish. This is in the shade Waddles, if you wanted to know. This was like the Dusty Rose Mauve type of like satin shade. A cream formulation, very nice formula. I have nothing against it. As you can see, there's not much progress here. I definitely have a slight dent going on here. I've only used this product three times in the entire time that I've had a Project Pan going on. It's because I am not a single eyeshadow type of person. I forget that I have singles. I generally do not like single eyeshadows because I forget about them. I forget about them because my eyeshadow palette collection is pretty extended. I have over 120 palettes in my collection. So I like to open up a palette and create a look just using that palette. However, I do have a few singles in my collection, very few, like a good handful of them. And a lot of them are in the pots. So if I want to do my own palette and put it into magnetic palette, I want to be able to move that pot and put it into magnetic palette. This type of shadow, I cannot because it comes in its own little container and I just simply do not reach for it. It just goes against my nature, if you will. Unfortunately, I don't have much progress. I tried, I really did. I am going to be decluttering this cream eyeshadow from ColourPop this time and I think that going forward, I'll be very, very, very selective when it comes to individual single eyeshadows because I think I've learned my lesson here. So in the bronzer category, I had two products and uh, e.l.f. Potty Bronzer was completely finished. It's an empty and then I had City Bronzer from Maybelline. The packaging broke and that's why this product even ended up here in the first place and I told you I will be straight up decluttering products that are with a broken packaging. This product however was a really good quality. It also is in the shade 100 that works for my fairest complexion and uh, this is how much I have left practically empty. I want to finish this. This is a really nice formula. You will see it in my next Stash of Trash Empties video. So another category of products that I had here were the tinted SPF lotions. The first one I had here is from Ulta Beauty and this one was an SPF 30 mineral matte tinted face lotion. This is a really good one and I enjoyed it. A very very small amount left here on the bottom because it's practically an empty tube but this is a type of product that is primarily served as an SPF and this comes with an expiration date. So mine has expired, so I will be decluttering this product. And then the second product was Bliss Blockstar SPF Lotion that I finished. And then the last product that I had here in my project pan was a lip gloss from Boxum in a shade clear. This is one of my favorite pink shades of glosses. I do have a mini somewhere in my bag, but the large full container was finished. You might have seen it in my last empties, and the reason why I'm popping it here as a picture for you is because I ended up throwing it away by mistake in my last empties. So as a final numbers for the entire year for the Project PN of 2023, I had 28 products running throughout this entire time. I fully finished 14 products, which is about a half. I ended up decluttering nine products for one reason or another. And then I am currently left with six products that are moving to 2024. Let me know what you think of these numbers. How do you think I did? Because it was my first official project pan. I would love to hear from you, your thoughts. And uh, if you have any additional questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I would love to chat with you there. I also wanted to share some of my thoughts and conclusions that I came up with after doing this project officially on my channel this year. I definitely realized that there are certain products that are simply not meant for my skin. Let me explain. I'm a combination oily skin and uh, I live in hot and humid environment here in Florida. Even though as much as I love testing complexion products, purchasing and accumulating products that are simply not meant for me, something that's super hydrating or something that's very sheer or something that goes as a glowy base. It just goes against the nature of my skin and the climate that I live in. So going forward, I think I'm gonna just change my mentality and come to a realization that it's okay. Not everything is meant for everybody. And I'm gonna be definitely a little bit more selective. I don't wanna be purchasing products just for review or reasons. So at the moment, my channel is considerably still small and everything I purchase with my own money. And I want to be somewhat in a way selfish with my collection because I want to love the products that I have because for those reasons that I just said. So I don't want to be purchasing things that are, again, not meant for my skin type. So I'm going to be definitely more selective going forward in 2024. Another uh, really nice refreshment and reminder was that it takes 
a while to finish some complexion products, especially when it comes to foundations. Also, when it comes to foundations or concealers, that also depends on the formulation of that product. If the product is one of those, a little goes a long way, that gives you a high coverage right away, that you only need a tiniest amount of it, and that product can be used for sometimes five, six months at a time. So also your preferences come into play, like how do you wear your complexion products? Do you like to do like a full coverage? Do you like to go light-handed? Do you like to spot conceal? Like what is your technique? from day to day because your daily habits matter how much and how fast the product is going to be used up. Of course, my collection is extended because I do have a YouTube channel. I do love testing new products, but if I was a regular consumer, if I did not have a YouTube channel, I would not have such an extended collection. So another thing that also came to be clarified in my mind that there are certain categories of products that I simply will be eliminating out of my collection. Things like liquid eyeshadows or cream single eyeshadows or cream formulas for eyeshadows generally. I am not as is a lover of single eyeshadows, but I'm okay with them if they are like in a separate pan that I can put them inside of the palette and maybe travel with or make it look like it's a palette you know, next to other single shadows. But if it's something that just comes in an individual packaging and it cannot be taken out out of there, I think that's just a deal breaker for me. I don't think I would be spending my money on those products. If brands wanna send me some of those products to be tested for review reasons, sure, that's a different type of conversation, but me personally, me spending my own money willingly on products like that, I don't think that's gonna be the case. So these are just some of the thoughts that I had going through my mind. So definitely having a project pan is uh, very beneficial. Uh, let me know if you've ever tried it, how it went for you, share your thoughts and experiences with me in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. But for me, it was just definitely beneficial and helpful to refresh some of the concepts and uh, come up with maybe a more straightforward mindset for the new year. So now, will I be continuing? Will you be seeing project pan in 2024? And. Uh, uh, if you've seen my decluttering series, you may already know the answer to this question. I am going to be doing a little bit of different version of Project Pan. So my new project for 2024 is going to be a project use up where I already have selected the products from my decluttering series and I will do a different intro for that project where I show you all the products that I'm starting with. I just pulled all those products separately and I'm gonna be working through them. I'm gonna be focusing on those products throughout the year. I will do a separate intro for the project Use Up uh, for 2024, so stay tuned for that video if you're interested. I don't think I'm planning to do like monthly follow-ups or even quarterly follow-ups. I will simply be including those products into my monthly Stash of Trash, which is a series for my beauty empties where I talk about my beauty empties. I give you my speed reviews on all the products that are in there and of course I will have the initial list of all the products that I selected from the beginning of the year and at the end of the year I will just do like a finale of how many products I managed to finish out of that list so I will still keep all those in a separate bin but I think you will just see all those empties as I go through them throughout the year in my stash of trash video so if all that sounds fun to you I hope you enjoyed this video and you subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my future videos well I'll wrap up my video here thank you so much for watching give this a big thumb up if you enjoyed this episode, this final episode of uh, Project Pan for 2023. I hope you have a wonderful day, wherever you are, and I will see you in my next videos. Bye.